In today's do-it-yourself sprinkler system related video, I'll be showing you how you can use a 120 volt sprinkler timer designed for city water systems to control your half horsepower, three quarter horsepower, or one horsepower, 120 volt wired sprinkler pump. The pump you see here, which I've had for two years and works great, is a dual voltage, one horsepower motor. I can power it using 120 or 240. But because the motor is one horsepower or less, I generally will use 120 volts. This pump only uses 1000 watts when the sprinkler system is running. The other advantage to wiring it for 120 volts is in the event we have a power failure, I can use my portable power station to easily operate the sprinkler system. When powering larger motors such as a one and a half or two horsepower, I will use 240 volts because with 240 volts you can wire everything up using smaller gauged wiring and a lower ampacity breaker. Both of those things will save you money. The other good thing about 240 volts is if the motor is going to be located far from your electrical panel, your losses will be lower with the greater distance using 240 volts. When I put this pump in a couple of years ago to replace the existing one that used to be in this room, there was a hose bib in the front and the rear. It was older piping, so I ripped it out and replaced it, but there were no sprinkler heads in the yard. Since then, I added sprinkler heads, so I need to have a timer that's gonna go through the four zones. You can see the index valve right here that I installed. And that's why I need to power this 120 volt pump using a sprinkler timer that can handle the load of a one horsepower pump. I did add this control timer on the wall. You can see it right over here. Basically, I can open up this hose bib, the one in my backyard, or the one in my front yard, connect up a garden hose, leave it wide open, full flow, couple of sprinklers. Then I could turn on the pump using this time control. So if I wanted the sprinklers to run for a half an hour, just place it at 30 minutes, and then the pump would go off automatically. It was a great setup until I added the sprinkler heads. So now what I need to do is just to the left of this is install a sprinkler timer that's going to turn on each one of my four zones three days a week, and it needs to be able to handle the load of a one horsepower, 120 volt pump. This is the one I'll be using. It's gonna be mounted to the left. You'll see the whole installation. This one is a 120 volt, and it's not designed to power a motor. And the other thing, these are designed to have the primary or the output, the load, connected to a transformer, a step-down transformer, which goes from 120 volts down to 24, and then you would have the low voltage wiring going to your sprinkler control valves, turning each zone on and off. So what I need to do with this one in order to be able to use it, if you look right under here, some of these would have a transformer mounted right in there, and that would give you your 24 volt AC output, which would go to a water control valve with a solenoid located right before your index valve. And every time this turns on and off, it would have your city water change the different zones. In order to power my one horsepower pump, I'm going to add a relay right over here. Now that relay is going to have a coil that's 120 volts because the timer is operating at 120. Right here is the relay. You see it's a single pole. The top on this side is going to be open and closed using an electromagnet at the bottom. 120 volts is applied here and here to trigger this in order to make the connection close to turn on your pump. This side here is nothing more than a feed through. So I could put my neutral here and let it feed through. I could just twist the neutrals together and just ignore this side. Just use the one side as a switch. Now if I take these off right here, this is going to be mounted all the way inside like that. So first let me make the proper holes, put the relay in the correct position, and then we're going to take the knockout out here, open this all up. I'm going to be replacing this timer control with a simple heavy duty switch. 
I'm going to use that in the event we get a lot of rain and I don't feel like opening this cover, putting it into one position, closing it and then later opening it again and putting it back to auto. I can simply turn the switch off and it will bypass the output to the motor from the clock. So nothing is going to be affected with the time control of the clock. I'm just going to break open the circuit by putting the switch down for the pump when there's a lot of rain. Here's what it looks like with the relay bolted in. Very tight, does not move. Now I'm going to turn the power off and open up this cover. Okay, cover's off. This goes to a light inside this room. That stays off to the side. I'm going to take the knockout out over here. And I'm going to remove this timer control. This is the hot going to the pump. This is the hot from the power supply. Take out this knockout. That's good. I'm going to be using this half inch offset connector. That'll fit right in there. Alright, so this isn't going to be tightened until I get the right depth with this. Take this knockout out right here. I'm going to be tap conning this box to the wall. Take this torpedo level. Just make sure it's in the middle. Make a mark. Now, I could tighten this ring and that ring in a minute, but I want to put another screw back here in this corner. The relay is in the way of that one, so I'm not going to do one there. Two of these are sufficient because this connection here is solid. So let me drill one more in the corner. That is not going anywhere. Handy tool. And you don't have to over tighten this. That is tight. Wow. Now it is solved. Right over here is the switch I'll be using when it's all finished on the right side. That's going to override this. Shuts off power to the pump so it has no effect on the time clock or the operation. Over here is the neutral. It's a 20 amp line, number 12 wire. This goes to the pump. So this is going to connect to one side of the switch. The other side of the switch is going to go through this conduit or this nipple around here to the top section which is going to be the relay switched part connected over there or to the blade connector. I haven't decided yet. Neutral, I got to add one more wire from this point through here to power the clock and everything else. Right here is number 12 yellow. I could slide that through here right now and that's going to go to the switch. It's going to go actually to this side here. I'm going to connect it right now to the top. Make sure it's tight, just don't get carried away. That looks great. Perfect. Just like that. Now the white, open this up. Add one more through here. Over here is the neutral. This is number 12. I'm going to slide this through. I want to leave some extra room here, so I'm going to kind of loop it back and then around that screw. Make sure the loop is clockwise before you tighten it. That's perfect. Okay, this is together. I still prefer the wire nuts over the Wagos after the testing that I did. If you haven't seen that testing video, a link has been posted at the end of this video. 
Okay, so this can go up, curve down into the corner. These are ready for the switch. The ground should reach the switch. 120 volt power needs to go here. Number 12, gotta extend this. Because it's stranded, you don't have to use the alignments on this. The connector will actually twist them together. Just make sure they're perfectly lined up. And then you wanna let it twist a little bit. That's not going anywhere. So this wire, which is the extension of the power, needs to go to where it says line and the other side of this relay. So this needs to go here, and then I could take a blade connector between here and there. Okay, so over here, you have blades sticking out. I'm going to be plugging that in on that side connected to this. This side is going to go in between here for line. Plug it right there. Perfect. Okay, so now the only thing left to do inside here, I have the blade connectors for the coil here and there. The neutral needs to go to one, and this normally open contact, which is blue, needs to go to the other. This wire is ready to go. I'm gonna go from the bottom around to neutral, and then this one will go over and curl up back to there. This is an overkill, this gauge. I believe it's number 12, and this coil maybe draws a couple of hundred milliamps. So you can probably use 16 gauge to 12 gauge. I gotta slide the bottom one. And it's going. Let me just grab it. I need another one. Push it there yeah, all the way in. So as the timer rotates, when the trippers are contacted, you can hear it just triggered. This switch will make this go from normally open, closed. So that means a 120 volt uh, AC is going to be present here, and it connects to this side of the coil, energizing the coil closing the contacts between the AC 120 volt line and the pump. Of course, between here and the pump will be the switch. So let me do this last one right here. Here we go. That is quality. Everything is connected exactly the way it's supposed to be. Now keep in mind, you can control not only a 120 volt AC circuit like a pump, you can use this contact area right here for a 12 volt DC circuit that you want to trigger. So the 120 volts runs the clock and the coil, but this is isolated from everything else. So as soon as the coil is energized, you'll have continuity between this point and that point. And you can control a pretty high current DC circuit. Just make sure you select the proper relay for the current level that you'll be using. Top screw. Oh. Tighten down securely. Perfect. Now the yellow, this one I could slide right in because there's this nice brass plate in there that's going to allow that stranded wire to seat properly. Tighten that good. All right, so the way it is now, if this turned the pump on, pump does nothing. So you're always gonna leave that up unless it rains. You can see this has a nice connector here for the wire, just slide it in, tighten it, and then I could bend it with my needle nose into the correct position so I could put the cover back on. They stand at a different angle and tighten that. With all of this completed, the last thing that I did was take a scrap piece of ground wire 
and run it directly into the electrical box and connect it right over here. Okay, we're all back together. I got my light. Good. This is off. Now when I turn the switch to manual on, the relay should click if it's wired properly. Yep, you can hear how loud that is. Good. Now if I put this to on, when I turn that on, the pump should come on. If you do, as I showed in this video, you should have no issues at all using one of these 120 volt mechanical sprinkler timers. Thanks for watching.